Hello everybody, welcome back to Plain Simple. This video is a little long overdue. Um, and it may seem, it's gonna seem a little disorganized because it's a collection of different video clips that I was able to gather over time. Uh, it wasn't all done in one shot one day, it's, it's a collection of individual shots every chance I got to every time I was exposed to the top to today's topic and this this is continuing the topic of reverse thrusters this is as you saw in the video title this is part two um, today I want to show a few the, the focus on today's video is going to be showing a few different types of reverse thrusters in action not just a theory of how they work but to actually see them in action including at the very end of the video there's a, there's a few um, videos of reverse thrusters in action in the rain and the rain serves to, f to show the flow of air out and about around the engine when the reverse thrusters are deployed. Um, the first type of, of reverse thruster that we're going to look at is what you already saw in the introduction of the video is more or less this type where you have the clamshells are external to the engine are actually part of the cowling system in the engine and they deploy outwards and meet in the back to close off basically cut off the jet exhaust that would normally be coming out the back of the engine it diverts the air it blocks off that path like you saw on part one of the series it blocks off the path and it diverts the air out and forward except that the video that I showed the little clip that's on the intro to this video it has it's a little different than this because it has part of the nozzles that stay back here but when the clamshells deploy there is no exhaust going out to the back of the engine it's all going uh, forward Now this picture here, I have a picture of this very same reverse thruster, not in action, but halfway through its deployment and all the way extended. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that picture now. So that, the picture and the videos that I showed you cover this type of uh, external clamshell on the engines. Normally with the clamshells retracted, you would have an open end in the back of the engine. With the clamshells deployed, this is what you get, what you just saw in the picture. Now the next type of reverse thruster that we're going to see in action is this internal clamshell from specifically from the JT-8 that I showed on part one of this video this time we're gonna see it in action where you have the clamshells in the retracted position you know they pivot on a pivot point inside of the engine normally this is a direction of the exhaust gases and with the doors retracted they're closing off this cascade doors on the side of the engine and they open up the exhaust path when they get deployed they rotate this way and they meet in the middle like this blocking off the path in the back of the engine and forcing the exhaust to redirect and go outward and forward through the cascade doors and that's what I'm going to show you now 
All right, this is another example of the reverse thruster that I wanted to show you guys in action. This would be the, the, the tail cone, the exhaust nozzle of the JT-8, which is that engine back there that it's been in other videos. Um, the reverse thruster video, I explained how the reverse thrusters work on that particular engine. Uh, this here is that. And I'm about to show it to you in motion if I can get it to work. This is where the exhaust gases would be coming from the engine. This grate over here, this grill, ignore that. That's only part of this display here. But you'd have the exhaust gases coming from the turbine from the engine going this way and out the back. Now we're looking in from the back of the exhaust nozzle and you can see the clamshells here for the reverse thruster here. Here's one half and the other half is up here. When both of those come down and up and they shut the exhaust path, they divert the air and it comes out this cascade veins here. Right now, when the reverse thruster is not on, they're, they're retracted, this path of air is blocked. It's blocked by the cascade door, by, by, the, by the doors, reverser doors. When they come down and shut down, shut off the exhaust path, they divert the air to come out the top and the same cascade veins down the bottom. And I'm gonna, I wanted to show you those in action. In this case, these are actuated by a pneumatic actuator. Here's the cylinder. And this pushes uh, the actuating arms up in and out to deploy and retract the reverse thrust. And let's see if it shows up well enough. There we go. There you go. Now, cascade doors are open. The exhaust would be coming would be coming out now instead of coming out the back of the engine, it would be coming out and forward and out the bottom and forward. Hence the name reverse thrust. And now they're supposed to close all the way, but now I cut the air off, so now they're springing back open again. Now let me open them up. Again. There you go. Yet one more view of the reverse thrusters uh, at work. Again, what you just saw now was exactly this. This is the diagram form of those uh, clamshells inside of the engine with the exhaust path opened up. Clamshells are blocking the cascade doors and allowing the exhaust to go out the back of the engine. When they deploy by the pneumatic actuators, the pneumatic pistons, they swing that way and this way to end up like this. This is what you just saw on the video of these opening and deploying, opening and closing. And this is what you get, a redirection the cascade door is open because now the clamshell is no longer blocking here, but it is blocking the back. So you redirect the air out and forward. Now the last type of reverse thruster that you're going to see is this type where the rear portion of the cowling moves back and you have blocker doors that deploy here that block off the bypass air path you block this off here and here not getting any thrust out of here but now you, when you slide this part of the cowling 
aft, you open up this area, these cascade doors. And when these blocker doors come down, blocking off this path, now all of the bypass air is redirected out and forward. And that's how you get reverse thrust. This is the engine that you're about to see now in action with planes landing here or at the airport. And the one the, the one that you're gonna see in action in the rain. So what you're gonna see is these engines blowing bypass air out and forward, and you'll see their flow reflected in the water that they are blowing off of the uh, the runway. All right. And you know what? I also wanted to tell you guys, thank you. Thank you for coming back to Plain Simple. Uh, so far, all the comments that I've gotten have all been positive. I like that you guys are looking for information, you guys are curious, so am I. I find these topics, anything aviation related, I find it fascinating. Um, thank you for coming along. Thank you for watching the videos and keep the comments coming. I read them. So far, every one of them has been positive. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. All right, in the next clip that I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see a manual actuation of the reverse thruster pedals from the cowling of a bypass engine. What you're gonna see is these gates, these pedals here being deployed, being uh, the cowling being transferred or to being moved back and these pedals are going to come up and close off the bypass air duct. Not from this engine, from another engine, but the function is very similar. Um, I'm going to explain what it is you're going to be looking at so that it makes more sense and you can get more information out of the clip that I'm about to show you. You're going to see very slowly, but you're going to see these pedals, or similar to these, closing up slowly and blocking off this bypass duct that means and that redirects the air from bypass outward and forward and you're gonna see a guy uh, on the bottom of the engine using a speed handle turning by hand the mechanism that makes this happen that translates this cowling aft and closes these pedals off to block off bypass air, turning that, stopping the thrust, and turning that into reverse thrust. And normally, the actuators that move that cowling back are these, right here. And there's several of those, in this case there's four, around the engine. To mechanically connect all those actuators to synchronize their motion and to turn them all together and move that cowling back there's a flex shaft which is this right here connecting one to the next and one to the next and going all the way around normally there's an actuator there's a motor up here on this particular engine there's a motor here that is not there now but it would be turning both of these flex shafts here it's either ele electric, hydraulic, or pneumatic, but you have some type of motor that turns those flex shafts, which in turn turn that actuator, which has a lead screw, which moves this cowling aft and opens up the gates for reverse thrust. And this is a flex shaft that goes from that actuator to the next and to the next and so on all the way around the engine. And what you'll see on the next clip is a technician hooking up a speed handle very much into one of these uh, mechanical linkages, overrides, where you can hook, hook up to it and turn it by hand. It takes a while. I'll speed up the video so that it doesn't so it doesn't get boring. But 
what you'll see is the mechanical override, mechanical actuation. You're gonna see that this cowling will move back and you'll see these pedals close up. All right, guys, I was tracking this Delta flight uh, because I wanted to catch it landing. As you can tell, the weather's a little rainy. Uh, we just had some rain, and then the reason I was tracking that flight is because I wanted to catch it land and deploy its reverse thrusters. And I did. I was able to catch it just as it went through in front of me over here, and it deployed uh, reverse thrusters and then actually i was able to capture what i wanted to capture which is the water from the runway before it drained out after the rain being blown out the sides of the engines so the engines are once a plane lands deploys reverse thrusters and it starts blowing air out to the sides of the airplane the the sides of the engines and blowing it forward and down and whatever and the fact that the runway was wet because it just rained it's blowing up and scooping up water to the blowing it out to the sides of the engine and that's what i wanted to capture and i think i was able to so next i'll show you that clip so you're gonna see the plane land skim across and right about here deploy the reverse thrusters and uh you'll see it scooping up water
All right, now I'm waiting for this 737. Uh, I think it's a Southwest uh, 737. I'm waiting for that plane to land, see if the runway is still wet, wet enough to, to show the reverse thrusters scooping up all the water off the floor. Not scooping it up, but blowing it away. Kind of show the, the flow of the air going out the sides of the engine. nowhere near <laughs> I guess when you have blowers gasoline or <laughs> jet fuel powered 10,000 uh, horsepower air dryers blowing over the runways it tends to dry up pretty quick well that was a waste of time <laughs> and I can't believe I got my shoes wet for this <laughs> 